Hey, welcome back to Basic Motorsports on another episode of the Vinyl Wrap on the Wide Fox. So it's finally time I need to get these rear quarters done. And I tell you what, these things are probably going to be the hardest piece to do on this, just for the curvature alone and the size of the piece. Front to back, I have cut a piece that is 66 inches. So, you know, this is a 60 wide. This way is the roll, 66 front to back. And I've also taken off 7 inches off the bottom of this piece. So out of the 60, the width, I've taken off 7, which would go to the door sill. So I already have the driver's side done. And the beauty of having two sides of a car is that the first time you do it, you get to find all your mistakes. So I found a couple mistakes, a couple areas that I had trouble with on the uh, driver's side and that was an adhesion issue right here at the front and then right down and trying to do this uh, the sills and kind of wrapping around into the jams those are two areas that caused me a lot of issue on the driver's side I got through it I got it fixed and there's a couple patches in here you guys will see it if you see it in person otherwise it's not so bad the beauty of finding all your mistakes on the first piece is that on your second piece you don't get to make them again you don't have an excuse so a couple of things I had trouble with on the driver's side was I kept bunching material right up here with my arm because I was reaching behind to try and keep this panel here flat and doing all that. So this time I've actually, instead of going uh, what they call cowboy, taking all the backing off and going at it one shot, what I've done is I've stripped off from basically about here down to a, this section here. This is why there's a ripple. That has backing removed. So I've already started going down the rear pillar here and I'm gonna start working uh, from the top down, kind of going through this piece by piece, just trying to get it all lay in there. Now remember on this, because you're going down into a recess, which is gonna be your, your sail panel and then your window, remember you wanna uh, get the material to kind of push down in there. You don't wanna use heat and you don't wanna overstretch it. You don't wanna go, remember, it needs to flow like water. So don't go on the high points and try to push it down in there. You want it to flow down in there. So by doing this a little bit at a time, what I can start to do is get this now sit down in here and I can pull it tight as I go and kind of wrap it down inside the recess. That way there's no tension on the material and I don't have to overheat it and try to make it stick and force it in there. Let it flow in there and it'll stick like glue, literally. All right, so here, let me take a minute and show you kind of the finished product. So you've got your pillar going down, and I'll get those wrinkles out. But you can see everything's fed down in here. Now at the top, you can see all this is fed in. Now this ridge line here where you get your trim, what I did is I stretched it up over this, cut right under this edge, kind of where my fingernail is, cut under that, and then tucked underneath. Now you can feed everything else in, and it goes down nice and smooth. And you just got to take your time. You don't need heat. Just take your time with it, you know, just just feed it in there. It's it's gradual. It's a patient game to get this all to fit in there. You can see it fits all the way around. I've got still got a little bit of stuff in here. I got to get out, obviously. And then, well, what sucks is that it kind of all kind of merges up here. And what I ended up doing was basically taking a strip out. So I wrapped all the way up here, cut it, wrapped all the way up over here and then trim. So I've got Basically, you'll have your two pieces here on your trim that will come right to the corner and then it will look, it will appear like this goes with it. Not the best case scenario. I would love to do it in one piece. Uh, on the other side, I actually did a little bit better job at doing one piece, but here it will at least match the body line. Now I'll show you kind of how the jam goes in so you can see it comes down in and I'm going to cut trim right here on this flange all the way down. 
So I've got it, uh, you know, cut right here in this, basically this recess, cut this and then peel all this extra material away. Cause remember your door seal goes over this and it's going to butt up against this. So having material beyond this kind of corner here, where it goes down in front, having material beyond that is just a waste because it gets covered up by the door seal. Now, obviously this big bunch of nonsense right here has got to be the next on the list. So I will, uh, start working on it and uh, just working downwards, working down. I'm gonna leave this section here as it is, start kind of pulling everything down away, getting all these wrinkles out, and then uh, I've gotta work on this wide body section here, which is causing an issue because it juts out so far because of the cuts. y'all so here's looking at the finalized jams you can kind of see down in there so that is cut this is black obviously but you can see the sheen difference so that is cut literally right along the edge all the way down and again it comes down right to here to where the metal meets now this is the inner this is the outer so there's a shelf right there you can cut against and that just goes all the way in now that completely covers um, everything that you can see with the door closed so it will look green but the minute you open that door, somebody's gonna see your color is not green or that. And just take uh, care of this stuff, I'm trying to get this stuff to lay down in there to basically come over this hump and then over that hump. You might have to use a little bit of heat. It's still gonna wrinkle a little bit and you got a possibility, there's a couple of wrinkles for me. Um, just using heat though, gets a lot of it out and gets the material to lay down smooth. And so you can just come down all the way down. Now again, I had said I'm gonna run the sill, so it should go from here Kind of all the way down and under and this one comes all the way down to the length so it jumps this and it'll all just come straight off of here come into this and then it goes straight back across here so this can be cut off right down here this is just extra cut off the sill piece itself will come all the way across this and just basically out and down
All right, y'all, so here's kind of the finished product. So I showed you the jam all the way down. That's fine. Still need to obviously trim down in here. Trim a little bit there, but that's fine. Now, I tell you what, going around this uh, wheel well area on a normal car would be fine, but on the wide body, oh, it is it is pokey. It is terrible. That quality is garbage, but thank goodness I actually have a wide body cover, so you'll never see it. But I tell you what, these little prongs right here, man, they grab that uh, wrap. They grab your shirt, they grab your glove, everything. Obviously, everything where it's visible is in good shape. I need to heat and uh, push this down and then uh, run some sealing tape across it. Heat and seal here also. I'll show you the back. Good place. Now, you can see this, is, this right here is a patch coming in right from here because it just really doesn't flow very well. But if I show you, if I close this, you don't actually see it. So you're in good shape there. But that's just more or less a little extra visibility uh, protection. Obviously down the tail light, all the way down. Now I tell you, around this fuel door, this is complete garbage. I had to do a patch here. Uh, this is a patch here. And of course I need to cut this out. But I tell you what, I am honestly embarrassed um, by the quality. I almost don't want to show you this, but I'm always, always honest with you at least about... Uh, either good or bad work. And I tell you what, if this, um, around the fuel door and around the wide body area, if that was the kind of the A surface, the visible piece that you would see from the outside, this would be a complete scrap and redo. Uh, there's no way I'd let this say it's okay. But since I have a wide body cover over it, you can at least see it now. But once I put the wide body piece over it, you won't see it at all. And uh, it'll look fantastic. But I'm, I'm at least honest with you. I'll at least show you the bad quality and the stuff I struggle with. These panels right here, I tell you what, because of the recesses in that, um, they're going to they're be a challenge. I think the pros probably would have some, some difficulty. Now, there's guys in here that could probably just go through and whip this out, and they're very experienced. Me doing one car, having this, I tell you, if I stand back and look at that, that ain't too bad. So, I mean, here's, here's the finished product. You can kind of see that anything below that rivet line or the rivet nut line, you can't really see. So if that's the, uh, this is the driver's side, obviously. The other's the passenger side, I need to finish that up. Okay, so it's time to move on to the sill. Now, remember I said I cut down the, the uh, quarter here, I cut that width of the material from 60 to 53. That gives me a seven inch strip of the same material. Now again, uh, the width going this way, which means the color goes this way. And what you'll find is this 70, or this uh, 66 inches this way, gives you plenty of overlap. So all you need to really do is just kind of find where it needs to go so that it can go under the door, into the fender, kind of there, and it will wrap around roughly to right at the back of the wheel well, or at the front, I should say, the back of the quarter here. Now I had trouble with this when I did it before, when I did it on the driver's side. And the hardest part was I was focusing so much on here. What I kept noticing is that, is that uh, the bottom piece down here, I just kept getting little wrinkles in it where it stick to itself. And so I did it in halves. I really, I used my magnets to hold it. I peeled off half, ran half of it down and I felt okay with it. This does pretty well. It's it's the bottom edge. You just got to be careful that it doesn't start sticking to itself. The more you fool with this stuff, the more it, it's, it's to me, it's like duct tape. You ever have duct tape where you just, it seems like the minute you pull it off the roll, the darn stuff starts sticking to itself. This stuff's the same way. I don't know why, but by golly, it does. So remember the edge of this goes underneath the, uh, over fender. So as much as I kind of contour it and all that kind of stuff and pulls up, it's still gonna go underneath it, so it'll be fine. So right now, I'll, I'll just mark this as my uh, halfway point roughly here with the a little emblem here on the door sill. I'm gonna get one of my magnets, which is up there. Hold it, uh, I will peel off half the back and uh, start putting this on. Very easy to go on, just, I would say split it in half, work from the center back and then the center forward, piece at a time. Just, just take it as a piece at a time um, I've been lining it up with the top of the, the door edge here, which is why seven works. Sticking it, kind of working its way down like a waterfall. 
all the way down and, and it seems like it does okay just just be patient with it you know it's it's just vinyl it doesn't understand it's not supposed to be difficult <music> So here's the back half of the sill done. Now, again, if you have your little marker here on your sill, like on the earlier 4i cars, um, so this is probably about half. It's, it's about two inches in forward, uh, forward of that. But if you go back there, done. So top of the sill, and again, it's like a waterfall, and it's going to be cut down uh, here. You remember your sill goes on top of this. So this line here, you can, you can leave it if you want to, or you can just trim it here, cut it, and... Uh, you'll be fine. But just remember, treat it like a waterfall. Start at the top, next layer, next layer, next layer, next layer, all the way down. And then when you get to the bottom, you can wrap it underneath. And again, you're going to, you're going to heat it. You're going to seal it and then tape seal it because this area especially needs extra protection from peeling just from the, uh, any water splash, bugs, dirt, wind, anything like that. Uh, it's going to try to peel at that, uh, vinyl wrap. So you want to get that done. But as you can see again, this all runs out that way and as it starts to expand out just because the, the jam becomes less curvy. So you have extra material. So it kind of expands out a little bit before it wraps. And I've stopped kind of right here at the jam and then rolled it back underneath. So everything, like these little wrinkles here, this is gonna be underneath your flare. So not a big deal. Flare will cover that. You won't even see that once I bolt it on and uh, it'll be beautiful. So now let's get this front half done and I will uh, then Pop on that rear flare. I've already got the window trim on and uh, I will show you what the end product will look like. Okay so here's kind of the finished product. Now I do have just the sail panel set in there. I don't have it screwed in. I still need to wrap under it for the roof but you can kind of see at least where I've got it wrapped. You can see where I've stopped here and it's just right off this edge so the roof will actually wrap down further than this. Probably down in something like this here. A little bit overlap, wrap down behind the sail panel, and then it'll of course wrap under this trim. So if I back up a little bit, get it to focus. Come on, sweetheart. There we go. So you can kind of see everything looks good. Now I will probably wrap the handles in carbon fiber to match the trim, but you can see uh, everything's there other than the fuel door to match. So step back a little bit. You can see everything changes the same color which is fantastic. See it starts to sh go towards purple. Good stuff. Very good stuff. So happy with that. So happy with that. That is coming out very nice. Okay, so with that, I am done with the quarter panel. Whew. Both of those are done. So what I have left is both bumpers, front and rear, uh, and then just the roof. So I think we're going to get, we're going to be close. We're going to be close to finishing this up. Now I'm gonna enter this into, if I can get it done in time, I'm gonna enter this into the Avery Dennison 2018 Wrap Like a King contest. So I'll do a separate video for that, kind of showcasing everything. Kind of get you guys caught up if you haven't been around for the whole build, it'll kind of showcase a little bit of what I've done on the body, some of the suspension and all that kind of stuff. So now, you know, you guys should probably recognize that I have pretty high standards for myself. And you know, I spent a lot of time on the body work and you know, all that kind of stuff. And you saw back here on the field door, you know, I've made mistakes. I've made patches and that. Sometimes I do make mistakes and, and I know I'm just human. So let me leave you with this bit of advice. Where quality matters, where it's going to be on the visible surface and everything else, maintain it. Keep it. Take the extra steps to get there. Take the extra time.
when it goes behind like this, we're on the fuel door that it has a piece outside of it. And once you close the fuel door, you'll never see it. Do patches. Save yourself a little bit of time and headache there. Make it functional. Don't give up on quality. That's not what I'm saying. Make it functional. Make it as good as it needs to be. But don't, uh, don't stress and waste a bunch of material and time freaking out about stuff that really, on the big picture, is not going to matter. If your door sills don't come out perfect and you get an air bubble or something like that, it's not a big deal. It's really not there. You don't see it. You see any of my bubbles in there? That's right. You don't. All this, this car has mistakes all over it. I know where each one of it is because these two hands are the reason they're there. But I guarantee when people see this car finally for, yeah, the second time, I guess, if they've seen it where it was all primered out, they see it now, they probably won't recognize the mistakes. You guys, if you've watched the videos, you know where the mistakes are because I'm honest. I will show you the mistakes and you guys can see them for yourself or just say, okay, I don't need to make that mistake if I follow his path. So that's why I show you the stuff, this guys, and show you the honesty of it. There's no shame in making mistakes. That's how you learn, unfortunately. It's painful. It sucks. I know. But learning through mistakes is really how humans learn, unfortunately. So when you make a mistake, let it go. Let it go when it doesn't matter, things like it's behind. But when it does matter, like this A surface, bring your A game to match. That's it for this time from Basin Motorsports, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If Whether you've been around for a while or you're recent, I appreciate you stopping by and giving me your time. And that's it for this time. We will get back on the wrap next. See you again. Oh, 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 oh,